You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadoulou, and today I'm coming to you all with my reaction and recap for this past weekend's divisional championship games for the USFL, going over both the Maulers' big victory over the Panthers and the Stallions' absolute shellacking of the New Orleans Breakers. A lot to discuss, a lot to react to, and just kind of digest. But most importantly, the reason I'm doing this is more so because I want to hear from you all. How do you feel going into the end of this season with the 2023 championship set as the Pittsburgh Maulers will take on the Birmingham Stallions for the 2023 USFL Championship. Comment down below. Let me know. How are you feeling about the game, the two losers of this past weekend, the state of the USFL divisions altogether now that we know who the two teams are standing at the very top are and are now going to face off for the right to call themselves the best team in the league. I would love to hear all of your thoughts and opinions, so make sure you fire away as I'm discussing. But beginning with the first game that we're looking at here, we have the Maulers and the Panthers in a very exciting, much higher than I anticipated scoring affair. The first thing I come away with when I think about this game has got to be giving EJ Perry all the praise in the world. And I will come out and say this right away. I was very unsure of how he was going to handle this game and this moment, having only started just one game for the Panthers the week prior. The passing attack didn't necessarily look quite where it needed to be coming into this matchup here, but boy, did he shut me up. I will have to give him all the credit in the world and then some because 23 of 38, not too shabby. He had two passing touchdowns with only a single interception, 370 yards through the air altogether. But what was most impressive to me was that 9.7 yards per attempt. He had the rushing touchdown on the ground as well. I did not expect that from this Panthers offense at all. And most importantly, from EJ Perry, I expected the run game to play a little bit more of a part in terms of just what the running back room was going to do, but obviously Mahler's defense was phenomenal in this game, completely shutting down the run game. And essentially, as I said in the preview of that game, made EJ Perry have to try to win this game with his arm and his legs. And he nearly did just that, taking the game all the way to overtime. But when I flip over and look at the Maulers, my immediate takeaway from this team is I am really concerned about that secondary and just the pass coverage altogether of this group. This was the most vulnerable that I would say, especially the Maulers secondary looked all season. And they haven't necessarily been bad at defending the pass at all by any means, but they've been kind of like average to slightly above Above average depending on the week they have some talent back there with Tarpley and Gilbert but ultimately I've never really been super sold on what they do defensively against the pass it's always been about that front seven and how they defend the run and we saw some serious breakdowns whether it was over the top over like uh, up against the numbers across the sidelines like there was some serious miscommunication going on and just players getting left wide open for scores and is really concerning to me going into this matchup against the Stallions who, and we'll get into this game later, but just absolutely throttled the breakers through the air. And they were arguably the best passing defense in the USFL this season when it was all said and done. So I do have some concerns there. And one other just kind of little nitpicky thing, but it is something that I feel like I've noticed from time to time. A lot of praise is getting thrown to coach Ray Horton's direction. And by all means, he deserves it. He has taken the Maulers from worst to first in the North. He deserves a ton of praise for doing that. However, in reality, still only four and six. And on top of that, there was a moment in this game, and I feel like I've seen this throughout the season, when it came down to right before halftime, when they settled for the field goal they ultimately didn't end up making, and rather than using that 30 seconds and the couple of timeouts you have to just try to at least punch it into the end zone, and if you don't get there, fourth down, you had plenty of time, you had the timeouts in your pocket, why were you not going for a touchdown? Because if you get that touchdown there, this whole entire ball game looks a little bit different come to the end and you probably don't end up needing the overtime. It's a nitpicky thing. And realistically, in hindsight, it doesn't end up mattering because they win the football game. But had they lost that game, I think we're all sitting here talking about that decision a lot more. 
as opposed to everyone's just heaping praise on Ray Horton, which again, he deserves. He took a team from worst to first in his single season as a head coach so far for the Maulers. Deserves all the praise, but I feel like I've seen just random things like that here or there throughout the season. And that right there in the moment was like, here we are again with another just head scratching decision. And I don't really necessarily agree with it. But at the end of the day, I'm just a guy talking about football. He's the one coaching the team. They still won the game. He still deserves all the credit in the world. But just a nitpicky thing for me that you cannot afford to have happen to you and come up with no points altogether in the end result up against the Stallions team that just dumped 47 on a team that had one of the better defenses in the USFL. But overall, this was a phenomenal game. It was really fun to watch. The Panthers just... Overall, with their issues, I mean, between the penalties that they had, 12 altogether for 137 uh, yeah, 137 yards, they had the three offensive turnovers, which I think are really a big difference maker in this game as well. If they could have protected the football a little bit better in the first half, this could also be a very different game. They were aggressive. They played a lot harder and a lot more competitively than I expected them to, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Breland Speaks continued to show why he is the dominant, probably most dominant interior defensive lineman in the USFL. And the Panthers definitely do deserve some credit for going down, but but going down swinging at that in, in a very tight affair. Um, as for the Maulers, just a couple of takeaways from them on their side of things. Ball protection and control, massive for them in this game. And I think that's going to be something that they really have to focus on going up against the Stallions. And I'm not going to get into too much of like a previewy type thing here, but just some things that I that I took away. That being a massive one, 35 minutes and 44 seconds of time of possession. You also had zero turnovers. You had long, draining drives on the defense, keeping the ball away from the Panthers, who if your defense played a little bit tighter, especially against the pass, you probably route this team, to be completely honest with you. So if you're able to play this similar style of football, you got to convert on third down a little bit more frequently going three of 14, which is like 20% or some odd somewhere around that range in terms of converting on third down. That is not going to win you a football game against the Stallions who I believe just went eight for 10 in their game. You have got to convert on third down, have those long, you know, chew up the clock type of drives. You have to keep the ball out of Alex Magoo's hands at this point. I think at this point here, if you're discussing trying to figure out how to stop Alex Magoo, you're kind of wasting your time. He is clearly in a spot right now and without getting it too much into them right now, but he is clearly in a spot where he's playing at a very high level and no one's stopping him. So now you have to default to just keeping the ball out of his hands. You can't make mistakes and give them extra possessions. And you want those long clock draining drives that we saw from the Maulers in this game here. If they can convert a few extra third downs, even if like, let's say you come out of this game at like 50% third downs instead of the 20 they were at, you look a lot better offensively coming into this next game here. But that's going to be a big thing that I think really comes down to it is third down conversions for the Maulers. And on top of that, making those long extended drives and keeping the ball out of Magoo's hands. Overall though, Future looks bright for the Panthers. Really excited, especially if they keep EJ Perry next season. It kind of sucks we only saw him for two weeks because he did have a big game-saving drive at the end of that game last week to punch their ticket into the North Divisional side of the playoffs. And then on top of that, he had an absolutely phenomenal and gutsy performance this week as well. I hate that we only got two weeks of EJ Perry because you have to sit here and wonder, especially as a Panthers fan, what could this team have looked like if we were using EJ Perry from the get-go. I would be very curious to see what this division looked like and how things played out for the Panthers had they been running with him the entire season. Maulers, they're just going to have their hands full with Alex Magoon next week. As for the second game, though, that we watched this weekend here, the absolute demolition of the New Orleans Breakers. As a Breakers fan, this one was a very heart-wrenching and painful one to watch as a fan because I was rooting for them to win. However, I did pick the Stallions to win, so somewhat selfishly just because of my record, and we are now sitting at 25 and 17 thanks to predicting both games this uh, this weekend correctly. Um, It was... Mixed bag of feelings, I would say, throughout the entirety of this game. And I'll be completely honest with you guys. I had to get up really early this morning for work. I only watched till halftime. And I went to bed until halftime feeling like, okay, this is a route. Stallions all game. I have no idea how the Breakers are even going to make some comeback. I feel comfortable going to bed, and I'll catch the game the rest of it tomorrow morning. And that's what I did. And sure enough, when I wake up, I see the notification on my phone from the USFL app, Stallions Maulers. I'm like, surprise, surprise. 
and I was like, wow, this game got even worse, and I can't believe that's possible. And when I went back and watched it to finish off the rest of the game here, my biggest takeaway from this game has got to be not only just the elite level of talent that the Stallions have over everyone else, but, and I made sure to like highlight and bold this in my notes here, is the level of depth that this team has. It's not just the like starting talent, but the guys that are coming in after the starting talent or just resting the starting talent that are just as good or maybe just a slight step behind, but are far superior to their opponents. It's unbelievable how good this team is from the very number one roster spot all the way down to the very last. It's just littered with talent. Skip Holtz has done an excellent job as a coach. This team, and I, this is, it sucks to say this because I, I, we talked about parity a lot this season and the league was very close and the Stallions did lose two games, but right now firing in all cylinders as healthy as they are, they are leaps and bounds better than the rest of the league. When they are at full strength and everything is clicking, it's it's almost not even close. You just completely demolished what a lot of people considered the number two team in the USFL, 47 to 22. And I mean, that score makes it look slightly closer than what it was. If it wasn't for the 15 points that the Breakers put up in the fourth quarter, we're talking a completely different story here. Like this game very well could have been like a 40 something to single digit uh, to the Breakers kind of game. And it, it was very close to being so. Second thing, I just want to shout out Davian Davis because boy, did he come out in this game with an absolute purpose and shut some people up and prove some doubters wrong. I really feel like he deserved to be on the all USFL team and for him to come out the way he did five catches, 75 yards on a touchdown, both of his touchdowns, excellent, just excellent statements. I want to say like, you know, just letting everyone know that should have been me on that team. And I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say who needs to get taken off that all USFL team, but I feel like there is a strong case that somebody else should have missed out and Davey and Davis should have been on that list. And I'm glad that he came out and had the game. And I kind of expected that too. And I, I talked about that in my preview was, do you know, if you can't contain him, you're going to have a problem. And he put up two scores on you as the breakers. And I'm not really surprised he came out and did that on the breakers. end, though, Great that you improved your record by one win this season. I would say that this team looked a little bit more complete overall this year, so I'm happy for them. You know, 7-3 and three record was great. Again, as a fan, fun season. And going into this game, I really felt like the Breakers had an opportunity to at least have a tight matchup with them. You know, they were able to win a very handed game the first time that they played, and then the second time around, tough, you know, tight game loss. But again, one that, you know, you felt good about even though you lost because it wasn't like you were getting blown out or anything. So for this game to have gone the way it, it did, you you walk away just kind of soul searching as a breakers fan and i'm sure as a breakers player coach whoever it may be within the organization you have to be wondering we improved by a win on the record but where did we go wrong where we were still so far behind that it, we're getting blown out by 20 some odd points and when i'm saying we're and we i mean as if you're thinking as the breakers here it's just it boggles my mind that this ended up being the end result. I thought it was going to be a high scoring affair, but I did not expect just an absolute route by the stallions. I mean, Alex Magoo in this game, when you just focus in on them on their side, 21 of 31, 310 yards. He had five touchdowns altogether, four through the air, one on the ground. He had 84 yards in the ground as well. He literally averaged 10.4 yards per carry on the ground. And then he also averaged 10 yards per attempt through the air. I mean, he has been playing at such a ridiculous level. If he's not on an NFL team this season, and I'm talking, he should not be just on a practice squad. He's got to be the, at least the backup somewhere at this point because he's clearly playing at such a high level and so much better than these are the guys, of the, you know, the, the, the third stringers or maybe some possible second stringers or guys that are your special teams guys. He's playing at such a higher level that he has got to have a look as a backup somewhere, at least. You're not going to tell me that... There are, if there's, what is there, 32 teams in the league, you're not going to tell me that there's at, there's 96 better quarterbacks in the world right now over Alex Magoo. I just don't really believe that right now with the level of play that we're seeing. Assuming that, you know, because everyone's going to have the extra quarterback in reserve now with the new rule changes in the NFL, he's got to be somewhere as a reserve at worst and a second string guy at best. At, that's kind of where I'm projecting him going into this next season here. There's got to be some room for him somewhere. I, Am I wrong? I, there's there's no way I can believe that Alex Magoo's back next year simply because he's just been too good to be back next year. The balance of this team, also another big thing. I mean, 
31 passes to 30 runs, and it really helps out when your quarterback is as mobile as he was. But I mean, my goodness, the running back room over there has really come to life. CJ Marable is, again, an unsung hero of this team. I think since he's kind of come on strong the last like month or so it's even starting to spark a little fire in the rest of the running back room here but for them to be able to run the football as effectively as they do in combination with the ability of Alex Magoo and his legs and how good they are in the play action in the short passing game it just opens things wide up you spread the defense so thin because they have to count for so many different things and you know that the Stallions do them all really well they're very well disciplined but this team is in such an unbelievable state I, and it, it's it sickens me as a breakers fan but as a football fan you just can't help but like gush over it because it's it's being done so well over there and then the defensive side Ben, but don't break defense and the last couple of weeks as they've kind of wrapped up the season here they're starting to look more like the 2022 defense where they were really starting to dominate i mean to have held the breakers the way you did after they kind of refound themselves this back half of the season after having like a mid-season struggle very impressive to watch on the breakers end though uh and again breakers fans i'm i'm hurting believe me i was excited i got my pick right but that was not the kind of game I was hoping for from the Rakers. I was hoping for like a, you know, one possession affair, get, you know, late finish where, you know, maybe a heartbreaking loss or something like that, but feeling good about it, walking away. Uh, a couple of things that I took away from this game here, the complete abandonment of the run. And I understand the game kind of got out of hand pretty quickly. Believe me, I was sitting there watching it kind of like, wow, this is not where I thought this was going to go early turnover. Then you get up seven to three. And then from there, it just kind of felt like the stallion. Like it, once you got to that seven to three point, that was it. That was the only moment in time where I was like, wow, the breakers might actually really bring this to the stallions. Despite that early interception, you know, ball control is key against the stallions. I would like to think at this point here and for you to just kind of ditch the run when you had 13 carries altogether for 79 yards, averaging six yards a carry, not really sure what happened. And again, I understand the pressure of, you know, the stallions are starting to get ahead of yourself, but you know, stick to what works a balanced attack keeping the ball away from Alex Magoo and, and play steady. Don't just let the momentum continue to build like you did where you were trying to just throw the football. I mean, it, what, did we, what did we have? 50 passing attempts from McLeod Bethel Thompson at the end of the game. I don't really think that's a recipe for success, especially in this league. You've got to play some good balanced football. And I understand McLeod Bethel Thompson, talented passer in the USFL, but that was not the recipe for success for the breakers. It was a very well-balanced, distributed ball amongst all the receivers, but also incorporating a sound running game so that way you could force defenses to play a little more honest and they're not necessarily expecting what, you, you know, you expect the breakers to do and that is throw the ball efficiently because then you're throwing 50 passing attempts. McLeod Bethel Thompson has two interceptions and, it, you know, it, it's it ended up being a very frustrating game to watch as a Breakers fan from start to finish, honestly. Aside from like the few good things early and there were not really too many because you started out with the interception on that first drive, I am at a loss with where this team is right now because again it was a an improvement year but it does not really feel like you walked away from this game closing any of the gap with the stallions it honestly feels like it's even further so next year curious to see what they do i liked the mcleod bethel thompson experiment this year you know having a seasoned veteran quarterback but I do still believe that the USFL should be utilized more as a, as a league of opportunity. And I would like to see someone younger get an opportunity. Again, no hate or disrespect towards McLeod Bethel Thompson. Greatly appreciate the work he did for the Breakers this year. But I really feel like I want to see a young guy get his opportunity to turn it up a little bit and see what we can get out of him next season with the Breakers. Uh, as for the defense, um, I don't really know what to make of that. I don't know if, and, and, and maybe it is just Alex Magoo is that much better, but I don't really know if they got exposed or if Alex Magoo is just that much better than the rest of the USFL talent. I, I don't know. I don't really know what to make of that. I'm still kind of soul searching what the hell happened on defense. So uh, that's kind of where I stand on that side of things. Um, but right now the Stallions are as hot as they come. I don't really think you can deny them that number one spot at any longer. If anyone still might've thought the breakers had an edge on them, even though they were, you know, a, a, the game behind them, whatever the stallions are clearly the team and the Maulers have their hands full next week. I'm going to be very interested in how they a play them defensively and B if they're able to keep the ball out of Alex Magoo's hands to at least mitigate the scoring opportunities, because if you're just giving the ball back over and over and over again to the stallions, they are going to roll. Uh, and for the Breakers, great 7-3 season. Great to make it back to the South Division, but 
Something's got to be figured out going into this offseason to close that gap. You have got to find some talent elsewhere and help bolster that roster a bit because right now, it, yes, it was an improvement season, but it feels like we went from being this far from the Stallions to now this far from the Stallions, and somehow we got better in the process, but it doesn't feel like it at the same time. I don't know. But that is my recap, my reactions, my thoughts to these two games from this weekend. Um, the way I see things right now, we have a very interesting game coming up, and I will preview it later this week. I have NFL content that is kicking up again starting this week as well as the USFL season finally comes to an end and my life schedule is kind of back to normal now. NFL content will start rolling out this week as well. So for those of you that maybe found me with the USFL, I'm around for the NFL as well. I do a lot. That's actually where I started before the USFL picked things up. So with that being said, if you made it to the end here, I greatly appreciate it. I will catch you all in the next video. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'll see you all next time. Have a good one.